<laughs> Hi, Mike. How are you, Mike? Good, how are you? Unconscious, but that's okay. We oh, were God. At, we were in Camp Pendleton last night. You were? Yeah, me and the Marines, Tony. Imagine how oh, dangerous shit. that was. No, the old no. man the old man chasing after the little boys. It was very yeah, scary. Oh, a constant no. two shot over there, please. You, you work in Los Angeles. Like you no, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm Mike, anytime you're ready. Uh, and within the signal from beginning that over there, it was really great. It was a beautiful tribute concert to, cool. to the Marines. Was it a USO thing? Uh, sort of. I mean, it was essentially, you know, it was Beyonce does Bob Hope. Uh, oh my is, God! Yeah, which would be a pretty scary That's a movie, hell of a actually. Yeah. Job well, they she's did. doing. Rick Baker. She's He's doing amazing. Steve Martin in the Pink Panther movie. Wow. And it's an MGM film too. There so we go. It all just comes yeah, full circle. Yeah, we go out with a bang. Anyway, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure uh, to talk to you. On, on all those occasions, I was a fan of the TV show, believe it or not. Oh great! And wow. If they had TiVo back then, I would have seen it more often. But anyway, oh, I can't believe um, it. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about. Um, uh, there are a lot of viewers worldwide, believe it or not, who have no clue. The Abbeville horror is, even though sure. it's a hugely successful thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry because we're so sort of got to ask you a few basic sorts of Please, things. Please, absolutely. In a nutshell, you know, what is the Abbeville horror? Well, the Abbeville horror is a uh, is a, uh, um, a, a, a basically what they say is a true accounting of a family that moved into a Long Island home um, right after six uh, horrible murders had taken place in that home. Um, the, the 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 young man that murdered his family in that home. Um, basically stuck to a story and still does that uh, he heard demons in his head that, that told him to do this so it's his family that moved into this home and they only lasted 28 days so something horrible um, and incredibly intimidating forced them out of there uh, within the month and uh, obviously it was it's uh, based originally on a book um, <coughs> yes. and then uh, it's essentially it, it's not really a remake of the James no. Brolin Mar Margot Kidder film that a lot of people know. Yeah. How essentially is this a different movie? Uh, well, I, I mean, it's, it's, it takes the essence of that story, which which I think was so intriguing back then, and, and really just applies today's modern technology and storytelling um, um, to that. I think it's a really worthy remake, simply because the original movie, albeit great for its day, just it really didn't age well. It didn't you know? It didn't stand the test of time, and and uh, uh, it's just I think I think. In a world of the, where we do a lot of remakes, and it's just it's it's great to see one that that is really worthwhile retelling. So um, yeah, and it, it does definitely depart from the original one in many ways, you know. And I, I hoped it would. I mean, it's uh, the one of the reasons I signed on to do it was that I knew it was going to be a riveting, incredibly intensely terrifying story, but also it's just a, a really interesting psychological piece for this character of George Lutz. So. Um, in diving into him, um, yeah. it's, uh, uh, my understanding is that is that you did not meet with the real George Lutz. No. Uh, uh, and I, I'm wondering, talking about the decision to, to not talk with him, because it seems to me as if it would be a really educational thing to do. Did you consider it? Well, yeah, I, I definitely considered it, but uh, you know, it's it's not something that I wanted to do simply because it's not a biography, and I, I wanted it to tell the story um, as close to the script as possible. So, I mean, I, I, yes, I could have consulted George Lutz, and I probably could have, you know, gained um, some insight into to what his personal experiences were there. But I, I really felt like I had such a clear take on how I wanted to portray George Lutz and. So much so that I just I really didn't want any outside influence other than my my the, the, yeah there's George talking to us um, other than uh, the director and and the producers and the people that were involved in the film so so it was a conscious decision to not speak with George. I know that I read a Newsday interview that said he was pretty pretty uh, sort of angry about this. Yeah film. yeah he's, um, and he's, you know it's like look at I. Yeah. didn't do these things and they, yeah. you know and it's uh, it's it's just sort of guy has to put you in a really sort of bizarre position you know it doesn't because I, I you know I'm 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 my job was to 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 um, bring the character that was on the screen the script um, to life and that's that's what I did and I you know I, and I and I'll always stand by my work as doing that and I just you know that that's that was what I was hired to do so the original film inspired sequel after sequel after sequel yeah you know we could see you back with the X. No, I don't think so. You know, although Meg Ryan did uh, Amityville 3D, which I still I still got to see. I mean, I'm, I'm dying to see that. So yeah, it looks pop up. That, no, that was fun. That yeah. was actually a lot of fun. Um, and the, the first one's just hilarious. It's like oh my it God. like Mommy Dearest. But you know what? Oh, Again, totally. You're too young to understand. But even when it came out, those of us who really dig horror yeah. movies, which I do, yeah, we just. Yeah, you're too young too. We you laughed our up. ass off that movie. Oh my god, it was I'm just sure. Like bleeding walls and Margaret bleeding walls. getting scary by that. A little point. red flashlight. Yes, yeah, bless her. Thank, hey, you, thank so you so much. Yeah. I do appreciate thank it. You. The single from beginning to end over there would be great. Um, I'm Are lovely, except for that I'm tired. Uh, yes. Are you tired? Yeah, we were at the uh, we were at Camp Pendleton, the Marine base uh, oh, last why? night. There was a big 
40,000 person concert last night uh, with Beyonce and Sharon Stone. Don't you and know that the Amityville Horror interviews are just so important? <laughs> this, yeah, <laughs> they're important for you. Yeah. Um, anyway. How was it? Was it good? Uh, yeah. oh, the concert was amazing. Yeah. It was just, it was, it was works when we well, come back. Yeah. And our home base is in London. So oh, it's, wow. And of course, they're on Pope Alert, which is a whole oh, other beyond. Major. We're not going to go there here. Yeah. It's, it's, we can anyway, talk about it after. Let's talk about Amityville Horror. Mm -hmm. um, it's some. Um, I'm wondering what it, sort of what it's like to, in in some ways, sort of be the girl because I mean it's, uh, Catherine as she's called in the movie. I mean she really is. She's she's the mom. She's in some ways sort of a victim, um, and I mean she's a bit of an archetype actually. Yes. Um, and in some ways, I bet just it's it's sort of maybe fun to be the girl. I mean it seems really crazy sort of in this particular Lovely scenario. Lovely as an actress to be the girl is <laughs> like thank you very much. I'm mean, yeah. talking about that though because you know in this day and age we don't see we really don't see sort of women like her. We no. don't see her at work you know. No and it's it's, it's lovely because I, they really kept true to the period the 17s. I was playing a woman that has kids at 16 because that's the thing to do in those days. It didn't matter. Um, you know it's all about the home all about the love of her husband all about the love of her kids kids, that's all she had to w be worried about. So when everything falls apart, that's all she has. So it just made her go mental and she really, and then what was beautiful is transforming this victim or this woman that was suffering from abuse and stuff like that into this warrior, into this fighter. And I think as Kathy Lutz, she just got off on that with the, you know, with the whole rifle thing and she was like, this is a side of myself that I didn't even know I had. And, and she became this very strong woman. So it was a beautiful thing as a role to play that that kind of character and then go into a, to transform into a modern day woman. Um, I, I wonder if you like these movies. Uh, it's, it's weird because these generally, frankly, appeal to, uh, like, you know, the teenage boy and me. Yeah. Uh, but these are the movies I went <laughs> and to see. You. Right, they went a million years ago. But, I, you know, what? these are the movies that I saw when I was 15, 16, 17 yes. years old. Um, I must admit, we did, like, even back then, we laughed our ass off at the original Amityville Horror. You it laughed was, back it then? It was horrible. Yeah, um, compared, 100 million, compared, though. Com right, but compared to, like, you know, the original Friday the 13th or Halloween, oh, those sure. were really scary movies. Sure. This, we were like, ah, the walls are bleeding. Ah! Yeah, um, yeah. Do you th I think they're still doing that when they see the original. Yeah, now. yeah you know, right. <laughs> uh, they're laughing more. Anyway, <laughs> this, is, I mean, this is different. I think this is more contemporary and, frankly, more scary. Talking about how you think the two movies are essentially look I, I don't you know look, the other film the original Amity was very dated um, and they didn't show a lot in that those days because maybe in that story they couldn't I don't know why but it's such a lovely thing to have all this technology and all this ability to show whatever you want in this day and age which doesn't say much about our society about what they want to see <laughs> but the good thing is is that I think this film needed to be made needed to be remade and uh, it was some some remakes leave it alone it was brilliant in its day uh, this one I think it needed a little little brush up. Did you do any homework on the real Kathy Lutz? I know that she's gone. She's, she's gone, died. sadly, um, yes. And, uh, you know, it's, I read an interview with, with the real George, who obviously has issues. I mean, these yes. things that happened in this movie didn't happen. I mean, did you, did you go back and try to get a sense of who she really was? Or? I did. I, w I just wanted to know more about the house, though, in general. Not so much about who she was. I mean, I, I knew reading the script that she was... I mean, it was very obvious who she was and what she went through. It was just more about the whole feeling of this house and what really went on and the whole Ketchum thing in the basement was true. It's been documented. Um, yeah, and just as far as, I didn't want to mimic her or copy her exactly. I just wanted to give my interpretation of this woman. Very quickly, tell me about the movie that you're in this summer with Jennifer Aniston. What's the name of it? What's it about? Derailed with Clive Owen and myself and Jennifer. It's fantastic. It's a thriller. It's based on the book Derailed. Um, we shot it in London, both playing Americans, which was very difficult because we both wanted to have the British accent and Clive and myself, and everyone's like, can you stand over there? And we're like, no, we're trying to be American. Don't, don't let us hear that accent. Um, it was just a wonderful opportunity to work and do great, work with Clive. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Vanessa. Thank you so much. The best to you. Yeah. Oh, and golly. Yes. Um, and you're? I'm, gonna, I'm Mike Sidoni with Associated Press. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, t talk to me a little bit about your relationship with the original story uh, because it's, I, it's, I'm aware that the, the Lutz family actually had some connection with you. Is that correct? You yes. Them? We, we were the family that were, my husband and I were the ones contacted regarding going in to investigate the home. And my husband and I founded the New England Society for Psychic Research well over 50 years ago. My husband and I have been doing research all that period of time, but it was at one point in our research that my husband began to realize we're not 
looking at this from a scientific standpoint, because science is not stopping what takes place here. You can respect it, you can bring it in to help document, but it's only through the religious that you are ever able to stop what goes on. So give me the, if, if you can, because the, the, our bites are so short here. I know. Tell me, I'm sorry, tell me essentially, you know, sort of the, the short form version of what you found in this house. Well, in going into the home, we found it to be haunted by evil forces, forces that probably affect people and, and buildings on their weakest, most vulnerable levels. We th let's say we start with Ronald DeFeo, because that's where the murders occurred. It could have started before that, but it didn't affect people as publicly and as violently as it affected this man, who was open and vulnerable, into drugs, into occult practices, at odds with his father, hated his father, decides he's going to kill every member of his family. But everything about the killing is a mystery. Everyone are dead, everyone around their stomachs. He walks from one floor to another with a high-powered rifle and kills all of them. Nobody wakes up to fight, no neighbor on either side, the house is so close together, hears a high-powered rifle go off. Um, have you seen the current, the new movie? And no. You did not see no, the new it's, movie? No, it's much easier if I tell it from the standpoint of our research and our findings. We interviewed the priest who had gone into the house. We know how we were affected, what we experienced. But what about that priest that went in to bless the house? Who was he? Was he knowledgeable? He was a judge of the church. He had his doctorate in our faith. He went in to bless and told us in his own words that he was slapped across the face and told by an unseen voice to get out. We don't get the, I wish we got more of the get out in, in the movie. It's, it's, it's in the original one. Yeah. Um, have, have you connect connections with George? It's, I've, I've seen interviews with him and apparently he's, he's living a happy life in Las Vegas. And yeah, I talked to him last night on the telephone. Before I went to bed last night, we talked. We do stay in touch. You know, Kathy's passed away and we do stay in touch, you know, with, with each other. And I tell him, Ed and I will always be in support of you and your family regarding what took place in this house. We know what happened, and we'll always give you whatever support you need. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.